So if all corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, then one triangle can be taken exactly onto the other triangle using a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections. The congruence of corresponding parts justifies that the vertices of the triangles will line up exactly. One of the most common ways to line up the vertices is through a translation. To get one pair of vertices to line up, followed by a rotation, to get a second pair of vertices to line up, and if needed, a reflection to get the third pair of vertices. So that's kind of what's going on over here. If you take ABC, slide it over so that A and D coincide, and then you rotate it down so that B prime up here will coincide with uh, E, and then we get this red triangle here, and then if we finally reflect across, we'll see that those two triangles li line up perfectly on top of each other. And the reason why we know that they will is because if you look at these, we know they're congruent. Now, let's take a look at the cooldown. There's a couple of things that you're told. First of all, AB is congruent to BG, and AC is congruent to GC, and we know that this angle and that angle are congruent to each other. So the question is, what rigid transformation? Rotation, translation, reflection across the line. What rigid transformation will take GBC onto triangle ABC? Once you figure that out, the question is, how do you know that when we do our rigid transformation of some kind, that G prime will coincide over here with A? And to answer that question, you really need to look at how these triangles are shaped and what pieces are congruent to each other. If you were to do a rigid transformation of some sort, how do you know that G prime would end up right on top of A? And then finally, are the triangles congruent? Well, remember, if the two triangles will line up perfectly on top of each other after a rigid transformation of some kind, then we know the triangles are congruent. Let me know if you have any questions.